All right, guys, in this video tutorial series, what we're going to do is a ball bounce animation in Maya featuring a bit of squash and stretch. So to give you an idea of what we're going to be building, here's one I prepared earlier. So if I just hit play, you can see that the ball starts off in the air um, and then it's moving across. It hits the wall, bounces back, losing momentum all the time, and it's got a bit of squashing and stretchiness to it um, to add a bit of exaggeration to it. Amazing. So now that you know what we're doing, you're going to need to know what we need. So I'm using uh, Ultimate Ball Rig, <laughs> Ball Rig, which sounds like a um, piece of torture equipment, but it's not. It's actually a really good rig available from CGI Meetup. I will put a link to this rig in the description below. So you'll need that before moving on to the next video. Well done for making it this far. I have high hopes for you. So let's get into putting this animation together. So as you can see, I have downloaded the ultimate ball rig and I'm gonna get that open. Hopefully this won't take too long. Oh, oh it's trying. Okay, let's have a look at this rig then. So as you can see, it is um, a ball but it's got a few controllers on it. And if we move these around, you can see this one here controls squashy and stretchiness. We've also got um, one of those on the bottom if you want to have the reverse effect. We have this controller in the middle that kind of controls the position of the ball. And then right at the bottom, you've got the root controller, which contains all the sort of extra controls. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by using this extra control to change the type of ball. Um, by default, you'll get this stripey ball, which is actually really good, but one of the quirks to this rig is that you can either do an animation with the ball rolling or spinning, or you can do an animation with the ball squashing and stretching, but it can't handle both. It's not set up properly for that. So as we're doing squash and stretch for this exercise, we need to make it so that this line's not here, otherwise it'll kind of shatter the illusion. So make sure that you've got this controller selected, we're then going to scroll down in the channel box and where it says ball type we're going to change it from basic to simple if you are interested there are lots of other fancy little balls in here uh, but today we just want simple okay the next thing we're going to do before we get this bad boy bouncing is we're going to change this um, situation down here it's starting at frame zero at the moment i can't handle that that stresses me right out I start my animations at frame one. It's just a matter of pride. So we need to sort that out. First thing I do then is I select the number in this box here. I type one, I press enter, and then I just move my playhead over to frame one. I can now see frames one to 100 and I feel much calmer already. Brilliant. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, it's already set up properly on mine, but I don't know whether or not it's set up properly on yours. Um, we need to go into the animation preferences, which is this um, chap down here in the bottom corner that looks like he's running away from a gear that's going to kick his ass. Uh, and once you've clicked on that, it's this playback little chappy here, uh, and it's the playback speed. It should say real time. Mine's set to real time 24 frames per second. Um, yours might be real time 25 or 30 frames per second, but as long as it's real time. If it's set on play every frame, it's going to go way too fast and it's going to go mental. So we don't want that. So make sure it's on real time and then press save. Okay, we're now completely set up to do this animation. So let's get into it. Right. What I want to do, first of all, is change my view. But before I do that, I'm going to select the controller that handles the placement of the ball. And that's because I can't see it as well to select it in the side view, which I'm going to move to now. So here's the side view. I'm just going to zoom out so that I can see the ball um, and give myself plenty of space. Okay, in fact, let's move it over here a bit. So first thing I'm going to do is set position one of the ball, which is going to be up in the air. And just because it's kind of easier for uh, my maths, I'm going to move it up by about 10 units. So I'm watching the translate Y uh, number change here. I'm just going for about 10 units and once I'm happy with that on the keyboard I'm going to press S and that sets um, position one 
and now everything's going to happen from here. So the next step, once I'm happy with that, is I'm going to move to frame 10. And I'm then going to put the ball back in the ground position. Now here, I get to tell you about one of the um, good bits about this rig. Because the way it's set up to treat the, uh, the bottom of the grid as the floor, anytime we put zero back in the uh, translate Y box of the channel box, it just goes back down to the floor. So we, we'll know that it hits the floor perfectly every time as long as we put a zero in that box. So what I'm going to do now is press S again. And if I just scrub between these two keyframes, you can see the ball's coming down, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Now, as the ball bounces, it loses uh, momentum. So the energy that it's got, some of it dissipates into sound uh, and heat and other types of energy. So it's not going to bounce up to the same height. And it's also not going to take as long to get to that height. So it's taken, in this case, nine frames to come down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take six frames. So I'm going to go to frame 16 to go back up. And I'm going to go up about six units. That'll do. And then I'm going to press S again. Now, one important thing to get a ball bounce looking convincing is that a ball should always take exactly the same amount of time to come down as it took to go up. So it's taken six frames to go up. So now we're going to take six frames to come back down. So I'm going to move to frame 22. That is adding six on, isn't it? Yes. Okay, and then I'm going to put zero in that box, back on the ground, press S, and then I've now got the ball coming down, going up, coming back down. So far, so good. Now I need to take some more frames off it and some more high off it. So this time, I'm going to go four frames along. So that's going to take me to frame 26. And I'm going to go about four units up. Maybe just below four units. And then I'm going to set that. And then four frames later, which will be frame 30. Back to zero. Press S. And set that keyframe. Okay, so we're just taking more height and more time off it each time. Okay, so now I'm going to go three frames. One, two, three. And I'm going to go up to about two and a half this time. Press S. And then I'm going to move another three frames on. Take me to 36. I'm going to go to zero and press S. And then I'm going to go another two frames on. Take me to 38. And I'm going to move up to about maybe 1.4-ish. And set that. Frame 40, I'm going to go back down to zero. And set that. And then I'm going to start moving in one frame at a time just to get the little bounces at the end. So frame 41, I'm going to go up to about just below one. And then the one after that, back to zero. And I'm just setting each one of these as I go. So the one after that, I'm going to go up to about 0.5. And I'm going to set that. And the one after that, I'm back on zero. And set that and then I'm going to do maybe two more of these little bounces. So I'm going to go to 0 0.2 this time. Back to zero and set. And then a really, really tidgy one just at the end. Maybe just below 0 0.1. And then back down to the ground on the final one and press S. So that's taken me up to frame 48. Okay, so if we look at what... Um, Effect that's achieved. We'll just play that on a loop. If I press play now, that's what we have so far. Not very convincing, uh, and that's because there's some more work needed on this in the next step. We're going to play with the graph editor. So in the last step, we got as far as this motion that we've got here, which is just making the ball bounce up and down, but it's not convincing at all. It kind of looks like a yo-yo, uh, which is not what we're going for. So we're going to sort that out. So making sure you've got the right controller selected, which is the one that we set the keyframes on. So it's that little chappy there. You'll know if it's the right one because you'll get all the red ticks on your timeline. And once you've got that, we're going to go into um, Windows, Animation Editors, and Graph Editor. And you'll be greeted with something that looks like this. I'm going to press A on my keyboard just to make this kind of fill the screen. Um, and this is the animation that we've got. 
Now what we need to do is make this line look more like a bouncing ball. As soon as this line looks like a bouncing ball, the ball we've animated will look like a bouncing ball. So what we've got here is we can see that at the top of each of these curves, it's kind of doing what we want in that it's rounding. But the problem is it's rounding at the bottom as well, which is not how movement works. So we need to sort that out first of all, we're gonna do the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag to get a selection and I just want all those keys along the bottom. And you can see I've got them now, they've gone yellow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the tangent, which is the type of curve that's used to interpolate between each of the keyframes. At the moment it's just on whichever is default, but I'm gonna use this one, which is linear, which means straight line. So if I click on this, all the ones at the bottom go straight, which is exactly what we're looking for. Because that's how a ball works. It hits the ground and then it comes straight back up. So straight away, the ball will look better. If you want to test it, it will already look better. But we're going to further improve on this to uh, make it look even more better. So I'm going to start on this first point here. And what you can do with these points is you can um, change them. So if I was to, so I've clicked on this one. If I now click on this side of it and with my middle mouse button click and drag you can see that I can have an impact on um, how these curves are working the problem is that they're stuck together so if I put a bit of a slope on this first curve it's having kind of an adverse effect on the other side of it which I don't want so the first thing you should do is select your keyframe and then this little chappy up here is called break tangent and that means that one side of the curve will be separate to the other side and when you move one, you won't cock up the other. So I'm going to break the tangents on that. I'm going to click this side of my curve and I'm just going to change it so that now the ball hangs in the air for a bit longer. It's quite a cartoony exaggerated ball bounce, but that's what we're going for. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. So I select that one and I'm just going to bend this out just to get the ball to hang in the air for a little bit longer. And now I'm gonna repeat this along all of the points at the bottom until I get a nice curve. Okay, so there we go. Uh, you might have noticed that I didn't bother doing the two at the end. That's because the curves aren't really big enough to need that doing. But you can see these arches on the, on each of the bouncers are now uh, much nicer. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep the, the drop-off rate a little bit more consistent. So here, they're not very consistent. They're kind of a bit all over the place. So I'm going to select this one here, and I'm going to hold Shift on my keyboard, and then I'm going to middle mouse click. I'm just going to pull that point down a bit. Uh, and that's just going to necessitate a little bit more messing around with the curves. Because now they don't quite work in the way I want them to. So I'll just change that. Uh, I'm going to bring this one down a touch as well. And then I think I'm happy. Okay. So now at this stage we're just going to test that out. So if we play that, you can see that the ball is much more convincing. It looks like it weighs something, it hangs in the air, it pops straight back up from the ground, making it look like it's got a bit of bounciness to it. So that is exactly perfect, spot on what we want for this point of the animation. So, so far, if you've been sticking with the, the exercise, we've got the ball dropping out of the sky, and it's got a nice curve to each of the uh, keyframes so that it's hanging in the air and it's pinging back up. But what we're going to do now is add a bit more cartooniness to it with some squash and stretch. So in order to do that, we just need to get hold of a different manipulator. Wrong view. So we're going to do the squash and stretch with this manipulator. So this is called Control Top. So I'm going into my perspective view just to get it selected and then I'm going to go straight back into my side view because this is where all the magic is going to happen. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is on frame one, I just want to set this keyframe as it is. It's a perfectly round ball at frame one. There you go, that's round. 
uh, and that's how I want it to stay. So I'm going to press S on my keyboard to keep that state. And now what I want to do is stretch it out, that's stretching, um, on the keyframe just before it hits the floor. So that should be frame 9, which it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to stretch the ball by about 0.4. That'll do it. And that's just before it hits the ground. And then I'm going to press S. So you can see that as the ball nears the ground, as it's picking up speed, it gets a bit more stretched, which is kind of a very cartoony convention. Uh, and then frame 10, the following frame, when it hits the ground, we're just going to squash it down a little bit. And I'm going to squash it by about the same amount that I just stretched it so that um, the energy that was there is now being kind of spread out so i'm going to set that and now what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to work a little bit out of sequence here just because i find it easier i'm now going to go to the top of the next bounce which is frame 16 i believe and i'm just going to set the shape of the ball back to normal by putting a zero in the translate y controller and then i'm going to set that and now i'm just going to work backwards you can see that, that looks all kinds of wrong. So in the frame after um, it was squashed, I am just going to stretch it out, but not by as much as it was previously. So I'm going to go to about 0.2, I think, and I'm going to set that. So now what this looks like is it goes into the bounce, and we've got a bit of a stretch. It then pings the ground and squashes, and then comes back up with a bit more of a stretch just to sort of show the speed that it's going back up with. Now what we do is we repeat this process two or three more times until we've got all the squashes and stretches how we want them, taking a bit off each time. So the next one then needs to be just before it hits the ground again, which is frame 21. And I did about 0.4 last time, so I'm going to do about 0.2 this time. I'm going to set that there, and then frame 22 when it hits the ground, minus 0.2, ish, and then the frame after that, I'm going to do about 0.1, just below perhaps, and then at the top of the next bounce, which is frame 26, set it back to normal, and press S. So I'm going to put a couple more of these squash stretches in and then we'll have a look at the result. Okay, so now that I've put all those in, let's have a look at what it looks like. Lovely. So you can see early on in the animation, the squash and the stretch are quite exaggerated, and then they're toned down as the animation goes on, as the energy kind of dissipates from the ball. All right, guys, let's get this ball bounce animation finished. So if you've been sticking with this exercise so far, what we've got is a ball that Starts in the air, bounces down, has a few bounces, it's got squash and stretch, it's got a nice weighty look to it. So far so good, but to add a little bit more realism, we're gonna try and move this from one side of the screen to the other, have a little bounce and then roll to a nice stop. So we're gonna put that all in place. Right, now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna select this controller here, which is the one that's controlling the position of the ball. And what I want to do is add another layer of animation to it. Now, there are different ways I could go about this, but my personal favourite, which I found quite neat, is to put it into a group and then animate the group. And what that means is that I'm putting animation onto something clean, so it's kind of like a, an, an empty vessel that I can put keyframes into. So, I'm going to select this controller, I'm going to hit Control and G on my keyboard, and I'm just going to call this um, Movement Group, just so that I can find it in my outliner if I ever need to. And what that will allow me to do, you can see there are no keyframes on here now, but I can move the ball side to side, kind of on a fresh timeline, which is um, how I prefer to work. So, let's get this uh, animation set up. So, 
I'm going to go back into my side view. Uh, and I want the ball to start currently where it is. So on frame one, I'm going to press S. And then a little bit later, let's just expand the timeline a little bit. Let's go to about frame 30. Mm, I want it to be in the air, actually. About frame 33. I'm going to move the ball. I've gone about 12 units to uh, the right. And then I'm going to set that keyframe. And then I'm going to bounce it back. So I'm going to go, I think in this case, to about frame 60. So well after it stopped bouncing, so it gives it time to roll. I'm going to move it back, not all of the way, to about there. So now I'm about four units away from where I started. Okay, so that's the base of the movement. Let's have a look how that is looking. Okay, not bad, but it's picking up and losing speed at the wrong times. And that again, as it was with the bouncing, is down to the way that the curves are working in the graph editor. So, let's sort that out. So, I'm going to go uh, Window, Animation Editor, Graph Editor. I'm then going to just scale this bad boy up a little bit. Go on, Chief, get bigger. Get bigger! And then I'm going to press A. Okay, so this is the, the problem. When it hits the wall, which is here... It's this keyframe. Um, the line should be straight because it's hitting a solid surface. So I'm going to select this keyframe and make the li linear tangents there. I'm also going to make this one linear too because I want it to start off at constant speed. And then I just want to uh, come to a more gradual halt than it currently is doing. So I'm going to select this keyframe here again. I'm going to break my tangents. Break those bad boys. And then I'm just going to smooth the curve out like that. Now, as you can see, that's had a bit of a weird effect because now it's going to bounce off the wall faster um, than it originally came off the wall. So what I'm going to do is select this keyframe, hold shift on my keyboard, and then with my middle mouse button, I'm just going to drag and then... that will allow me to just come to a more gradual stop and match the speed that I had before. Okay, so hopefully that's going to look how I want it to look. So let's um, rewind that and have a look. That's not bad. It is still bouncing off the wall a little quicker than I would perhaps have liked it to. But overall, I'm fairly happy with it. Um... I think I'm just going to remove this keyframe because I don't know what it's doing. And then just check that again. Yeah, so I just think on this keyframe, I'm just going to move it back a bit and I'm going to reset that and see what we get. Yeah, and we've got a nice little rollback animation as well. So, the reason we get that rollback animation is a happy accident and it's because my curve has gone past the the original spot but that's kind of what you're looking for in a ball bounce animation anyway so we're basically finished the one last thing i'm going to do you can follow me in this step if you want to or not i'm just going to put in um a bit of geometry so that it looks like the ball's bouncing off it so i'm just going to create a cube and move it over here and then i'm going to scale it up and it's just going to kind of represent a wall. There we go. I just need to now go into this view because it's not going to be thick enough in this direction. There we go. And then I'm just going to put it into edge mode. Select this bottom edge. I'm going to press Control and E to extrude it. Then I'm going to go straight into my move tool. I'm going to pull that edge along just to make a bit of a floor. And put it back into object mode. Okay, and now it'll look like it bounces off. A wall. Hooray! Amazing. So, if you want to preview this without the controllers on, you just go to Show, and then you deselect NURBS Curves, and then choose an angle you like the look of. I'm just going to make sure that it is connecting with the wall. It isn't quite, so I'm just going to reposition that. That's pretty nice. And there we go, a ball bounce animation. 
So, hopefully that has given you everything you need to know. It's a very sort of basic introduction to character animation. So it introduces timing, it introduces squash and stretch, it introduces giving weight to a character, in this case a ball. And it also covers uh, some useful tools in Maya, such as the graph editor. So that brings this exercise to an end. Make sure that you subscribe if you want more exercises like this one. If you've got any questions or you need any help, then you can either email me or you can drop a comment below the video. And the final thing I'd like to do in this video is thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.